What's up? What's up? You guys hear me? Can everybody hear me? guys doing it's actually letting me have my orientation as vertical this time so that's that works how you doing Cam? how you doing William As usual, we're going to start up with this warm up. <laughs> Happy to see you back at it. Thank you. It's been a while. I'm glad to be back at it. Hey, John. So, yeah, we're going to do. Probably around 10 minutes on this uh, Stairmaster. Why you wear different color socks? <laughs> uh, so it's actually a little bit of a long story. I'll try to make it short though. Um, basically in eighth grade, I ran track. Well, I ran track all the way, all through high school. Um, but in particular, my eighth grade year of track, I ran in the summer. And my team wasn't that great, or the team I ran on wasn't that great. And um, basically, it was around the time when black socks started to become popular. So I always wore white socks. My dad uh, had some black crew cut socks. I wore white. And me being an eighth grader, of course, ran out of laundry. So I had one sock left over. So instead of doing the laundry and getting clean socks. I used my one clean sock, uh, the white sock, put it on my left foot, put the black sock on my right foot. And we had a tournament that coming weekend or a, you know, a race or whatever. Um, I ran on the four by one. And like I said, my team wasn't that great. We weren't even supposed to place or anything like that. But we ended up getting first at a, a district, then we got first at regionals, and we ended up going, that year we ended up going all the way to state, and the only difference was the socks. So, sorry for that, I'm looking back. I need more consistent videos for me. Yeah, I'm working on it. What's up, Craig from New York City? Um, but yeah, we ended up doing really well. And I'm not actually superstitious or anything, but it's just a funny little story. And uh, it's kind of stuck with me ever since. It's greetings from Italy. It's four in the morning and I'm doing the revision for the university exam that will take a few hours. I'm pleasantly surprised seeing new content on this channel. Great. Hey man, Michael, that's awesome. Fans in Italy. That's great to hear it. I'm, uh, good luck on that exam, by the way. I didn't do, uh, four years at a university or anything like that, but I did military. I did some college, but, so yeah, I know the pain of studying and trying to get those good grades. So definitely good luck on that. If you're up at four in the morning studying, then I'm sure you'll do well. Let me know if the sound quality is okay, too. I know I say that pretty much every time, but 
jump in my little sub to your miles. Hey, Derek. How you been? What's up? Four minutes into this warm up. So yeah, as the title said, uh, doing Ruben. I'm currently feeling a 20 ounce steak while I wear mismatched socks. <laughs> Does that make us brothers? Pretty sure more than mismatched socks make us brothers, Ruben. <laughs> if y'all, most of y'all already know, uh, have seen Ruben in past videos, but the uh, on my channel, the uh, sharing the video on all your social media pages. That's awesome. Thank you, Cam. Highly appreciate it. Very much so. But uh, yeah, if y'all know, y'all know Ruben from past videos, the uh, Herbalife Prepare video in particular. He's the, the, the big Puerto Rican dude that didn't want to get up for the workout and then went crazy after he took some pre-workout. Busted in my room half naked with a high altitude mask on. <laughs> if you guys have me on uh, Facebook or if you've seen my Facebook, you can find him on there. Ruben Velez. He's always still keeping up with his workouts. I mean, trying to keep up with me, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Good old days, yeah. That's right. I'll let you for it. Shut up. Key on. <laughs> That was a funny video. Yeah. How long to grow hair? Um, it's been video chat lift off. You've been challenged. Well, I'm doing back and bias today. So the only semi heavy lifts that I'm doing is uh, bent over rows. Uh, probably the bent over rows, lat pull downs, maybe some cable rows, one arm dumbbell rows. And of course, curls, but uh, challenge, ex challenge accepted. But yeah, how long to grow my hair? Um, I want to say uh, it's been like four, a little over four years now. Um, yeah, so I've actually ripped a chunk out of a chunk of it out because. I decided that doing my my job, which is home remodeling, for those of you that don't know, um, decided to do that with my hair down about two years ago, and uh, I had a 12-inch bit on my drill, drilling through the side of the house, and uh, my hair got caught in it, and actually, yeah, I think you know the rest, but... Uh, I had a bald spot for a while. <laughs> and uh, that was pretty embarrassing. But it was actually in a spot where if, if my hair was down or even pulled back, you wouldn't notice it. But it's right over here. It was right over here on this side. So, and then uh, I didn't trim and do all that kind of stuff. So, my uh, my wife's mom used to own a salon, so she does hair and stuff. Like the Asian girl with the drill. <laughs> um, so yeah, she does hair. And I went to her one day, about two months ago, and asked for a trim because obviously trimming your hair make, uh, regularly, are you gonna walk the entire session, Jesus? Hey man, I got a minute and a half left. <laughs> Um, yeah, I went to her to get my hair trimmed, thinking she's going to cut like two inches off. I'm like scared that she's going to cut off two inches. Ask her and 
Yeah, she's like, uh, I asked her how much she thinks she'd be cut off. And she was like, honestly? I was like, yeah, come on, give it to me. She was like, at least five inches. Uh, so it was either keep letting it go, keep getting split ends and have to get it, you know, have to be cut off eventually. Or just bite the bullet, get the five inches cut off and start fresh. He's getting the old jaw muscles to go into, trying to get him to find jaw. <laughs> of course. 30 seconds left. Yeah, I was just telling my wife earlier, the only bad thing about streaming my workouts is I can't really do, uh, I can't really do my warmups as high intensity as I like to, because usually by the end, by the end of the 10 minutes, if I do only do 10, I'm like drenched in sweat, collapse on the ground, can't breathe. So obviously that wouldn't be very conducive to a active chat. Most Billy says, Miles, what happened to the narration on your original chest and tries video? Um, I don't know. Did something happen to it? <laughs> Not gonna lie, I haven't, uh, haven't looked at those videos for a while. I'll check it out um, after this. Sorry, busting out the tripod so I can get this all set up. But yeah, it's the new year, so a lot of people, well, not a lot, but more people here than usual. So it'll probably, but I mean, hopefully not. I hope people stick to their goals, but I have a feeling it'll die down pretty soon, just like uh, all the previous, previous years. This warm up is the length of my entire workout. That's true, actually. That's why I can't do workouts with her. I've been waiting by the front door when I'm just finishing up stretching and doing my leg swings and all that stuff. Although I don't usually do that during the video. So when you inject the voice, it's perfect. <laughs> Never. I was about to say roids are for the weak, but technically they're for the extra, extra strong. And I'm just regular strong. I'll grab me a towel here. Okay. But a couple of people here that I know, I'm going to try to avoid eye contact so they don't try to start up a conversation. Good to see you tonight. Thank you. I'm glad you, I'm glad it's good to see me. Good to hear from all you guys. Each time I stream, it's steadily climbing. So... Well, it looks like... Uh, all of the squat racks are taken up. So I can't do one uh, bent over rows with a barbell anyway. So, guess we'll start with dumbbells. All the mass police. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Just said, make sure you're wearing a mask when you're running. Supposed to wear it up by the front desk. Doesn't really make sense. They want you to wear it. And they don't care if you they don't care if you wear it um, while you're working out on the floor. But they want you to over by the desk. Whatever you gotta do to get those gains. Uh, like I said, this time the uh, orientation is different. It's usually horizontal, but for some reason it's set up as 
vertical. It usually tells me to um, turn the phone sideways to start the stream, but I guess it didn't care today. So, vertical stream it is. Or portrait mode, whatever you want to call it. So, I'm sending the help and trying to get enjoy your workout while I last. <laughs> I have to pry these weights from my cold, dead hands. Let's see if I can get a good spot for this. Let the bench go. All right. This is a little more awkward doing it uh, portrait mode, but we'll get it. I'm going to grab my. do it in landscape mode i tried whenever i turned it um let me see the settings yeah whenever i turned it it uh it said rotate your phone back to portrait so it might have to be like a pre-stream thing can you do squats i am doing squats tomorrow but i might not be streaming tomorrow so, either I can switch up my schedule and do something else tomorrow and squat on Wednesday or um, just put a video of squats, which I will be doing eventually anyway. Where have you been? Uh, working, not, um, it's been a while, but uh, yeah, I basically switched switched uh career path as you can say not doing personal training anymore doing uh home remodeling so really no reason to stop doing the videos but it happened and uh 
I'm back here now. That's all that matters. You can just do it once a week. What? Uh, post some videos? You really need to talk for any comment. Wait. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't need it, but it's a ritual. Don't ask questions. Glutes on 100. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try. Do you have Instagram? No, not yet. Uh, thinking about getting it. Oh, no, I will need to eventually. But uh, I'll be posting it on my page whenever I do. Let me grab some heavier dumbbells for these haters, a.k.a. Ruben. <clears throat> Uh, let's jump up to 100. Yeah, I'm kind of torn between, I guess not between different things, but uh, I'm trying to stay, trying to stay low key, uh, but at the same time get enough exposure to where I can get some, first of all, get my name out there so I can help more people and you know, get more people watching these videos, especially around this time when, uh, well, double around this time where, one, with COVID, people not, a lot of people in different states. I'm actually fortunate to be in Kansas because we don't have a lot of restrictions out here, um, but I know people in other states and even other countries have more restrictions, so a lot of people don't even have gyms open right now, so posting some at-home uh, workout videos for people that could use it. But uh, also, second thing is, it's the new year. And this is the time where everybody that has had thoughts about it actually gets into the gym and does their thing. But I know a lot of people fall off because for multiple reasons, um, sometimes it's just not motivated, not driven enough. But I know other times it's uh, not really feasible with their time and their work and um, maybe the gym or maybe they can't the distance from the gym, a bunch, a bunch of different things the money, whatever it may be so having home workouts where you can actually get a good workout, get really good progress is, is key So today my reps are going to be kind of fast because uh, basically the way you train is the way you perform. So if you do slow, steady squeeze on your reps, uh, that's how your muscles are going to perform. It's good for endurance athletes, long distance runners, uh, strong men, competitors, that kind of stuff. But for power athletes, you want to work fast to get those muscles more explosive. But keep good form. If you got to cheat a little bit, that's fine. But you don't want to be throwing your whole body out, working a completely different muscle system. Watch your videos for the good body of your legs. They're from Brazil. Awesome. Hello, Brazil. Thank you. I live in Baltimore. We're very locked down. Plus, I don't trust public gyms. 
I'll just eat and be happy. <laughs> hey, man, whatever makes you happy. I'm here because that's what makes me happy. So by all means, do what makes you happy. And it's crazy how different uh, different states, different cities have different, such vastly different rules for this kind of thing. It's pretty interesting. I'm in Delaware, I'm kind of locked down. Gyms are open here, but it was really bad enough to go. Hey, I got a, I don't know if you can really see, but it doesn't look like a lot, but more than, uh, more than the usual time around this time. Fun fact, Parsons had those shorts since, <laughs> since we joined the Corps in 2009. I don't know how that's on my piece. <laughs> uh, another fun fact. That's actually absolutely true. <laughs> and there, yeah, I mean, there's still on my piece. Well, I kind of have a small rip in the crotch, but uh, I make sure I wear underwear with these, and so we're good. Spandex shorts from 2009. Long, damn long to me. Yeah. Philadelphia is very locked down. Damn. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I'm fortunate to be here where we're not too locked down. We did lock down um, for a couple months. That was terrible because, I mean, I have some. I got some kettlebells and slam balls. Um, what else do I have? Mini hurdles, resistance bands, that kind of stuff. But it was right around the time where I uh, was kind of deep into powerlifting. So even though I had all that stuff, mentally I didn't want to have to use that stuff. So I probably should have just switched over and did lighter weights and did more high intensity interval stuff. But if anybody else fell off during the initial lockdown, I'm right there with you. But we come back stronger, right? What is this, one thing? I mean, I could probably get like 200 reps of this, but I'll probably stick with uh, 13, 12 or 13. <laughs> I wouldn't want to embarrass Ruben or anything. Couple squat racks opened up. Get a couple more sets of this and head on over there. Although I'm gonna be kind of fatigued, but it's all right. That's what rest time is for. Kansas is spread out. Baltimore is a whole crowded, overcrowded city. Well, Baltimore is also a city. Kansas is a state. I saw that from my college days. And my fucking awesome as usual. What's up, man? How you been? Kansas City. Actually, I'm sure the part from the yeah, I'm sure the part, oh my bad. I'm sure the part of Kansas I'm in is actually more 
stricter than the rest of Kansas. I'm pretty much in Kansas City, right across state line. I'm in Missouri is a lot more strict than over here. Under Armour is better than Nike. Fight me. <laughs> I mean, not many things I would actually fight over, but them is fighting words right there. Although my underwear are Under Armour. Just because Under Armour can kiss my ass. about to get you a little clan of Under Armour guys. What do you mean, Nike? Okay, so you agree. Good. I don't know what just happened to the connection there, but I think it probably connected to uh, Wi-Fi, the same off Wi-Fi or something. those of you getting back in, I don't know what happened. Maybe I got too far. Said connection lost, but we're back. I do one more of uh, one arm dumbbell rows and switch over to barbell rows, bent over rows. I need to uh, actually let me grab one of these boxes so I can put my camera up on it. This might be a little bit of a strange angle here. Yeah. For those of you just getting here, thank you for tuning in. Um, like I said before, I'm probably going to do Monday, Wednesday, at least for streams, and then uh, I'm going to try to do a video at least every other week. I'm going to try to do every week, depending on my, my uh, you know, full-time work schedule. All right, let's see what we can do. This camera. You cheated yesterday, one piece of carrot cake. Well, talk to Ruben. 
you want to talk about eating whatever you want. I called him, called him last week, and he was preparing some, uh, what was it, some cheesecake over FaceTime. Walking around with under 7% body fat eating cheesecake. The real reason that's why Parker was in my ass for a couple years and became obese. It was too embarrassing for him to become. He begged me to help him lose weight inside there. <laughs> uh, you wish. This might be a little better. A little bitter. Yeah, like I said, this uh, this vertical, this portrait mode, is kind of messing me up. I guess I'll leave that up to you guys too. What do you think is better? I know all you on, you guys on phone. Well, I don't know. I was going to say you guys on phone might like portrait mode better than landscape. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of, and it probably depends on the day too and the, the exercise. I know some workouts are more, you know, horizontal. Some are more upright. Today, uh, like today, they might be more, well, I don't know, actually. They're all pretty much bent over, so. But at the same time, Upright, so whatever. Going up to the one thirties, and then we'll call it there. Stick with those. Then go over to uh, Marbell. You're on the laptop. Yeah, that'll probably be better for uh, landscape. Like I said, I don't know why it made it go uh, portrait mode this time. Well, good. Hopefully it works with all the workouts we're gonna do. Still got one, two, three squat racks open three so we are good so yeah stay tuned for my my video that's coming up it'll be sometime this week um there's some a couple I guess compatibility things between my phone and my computer I'm trying to get figured out. I took the videos on my on my uh, iPhone, and I think they're just taking a while to upload into my iCloud to be an iMovie. But as soon as that happens, we'll we'll get it going. And uh, one of my brothers actually produces beats, and he made uh made my background and my intro slash outro sound for me, so it'll be more legit than last time. Well, the last two times, I guess. Remember, you always want to pull in a twisting, jerking motion. Just joking. Don't do that.
If you do, don't say I told you to do it. set up. Can't wait. Good. Tell your friends about it. It's, uh, don't want to give away too much of what it is. I'll have to check it out to see, but as you can probably tell from the the picture, it has to do with uh, push-ups. So, nice uh, workout that you can do at home. It's also kind of a, uh, what do you call it, kind of an assessment. It could be a workout and an assessment or a gauge of where you're at with your strength and muscular endurance. So anybody can do it. All right. We get to set up right next to somebody who's doing the same thing I'm about to do. Maybe we can learn a thing or two. Wish I could sit on. Say logged on longer to watch him. I gotta go to bed so I can go to the gym in the morning. Hey, I'm not gonna keep you from your workout. You don't need to watch me if you're already doing the damn thing. So you get some sleep. What's the best home workout for tightening chest? Um, depends what you mean by tightening chest. Do you mean? like skin or uh, burning some fat on your chest so that it can feel more solid or what exactly what exactly do you mean? I will set up right here. I'm gonna go grab my bag. So that's kind of one of those, uh, it's a bit of a misconception about the whole burning fat thing or quote unquote toning up. Um, you can't actually, when it comes to fat burning, you can't actually target specific areas to burn fat. So me, for example, I store my fat and lose fat the slowest um, in my abdomen. So some people, uh, it depends on your genetics, your heritage, uh, luck of the draw, a little bit of everything. But when it comes to when it comes to burning fat, you don't actually get to choose where you burn fat from directly. Now there are things that will cause you to store fat uh, in certain areas. So for example, different hormone levels, uh, cortisol, different things like that will store fat in different areas. Um, but as far as targeting one specific area 
to actually burn the fat, you can't actually do that. It's more of a overall fat burn. Um, you just kind of have to. You don't have to, you don't have to do tar, uh, cardio, but a key world, a key thing to think about is the higher your lean mass, the higher your metabolism because muscle requires energy. Fat is energy. So if you have uh, extra, if you have a lot of muscle, basically your, your body is going to uh, require more energy just to maintain homeostasis. So you can have two people that weigh the same amount, let's say 200 pounds. One person is 130 pounds of, of uh, lean mass, which is bone, muscle, uh, connective tissue, organs, and then 70 pounds of uh, fat mass, which is pretty, that, that would technically be obese. Um, that person who has a higher fat percentage, their metabolism is gonna be lower because all of that extra weight, all that uh, extra mass on them is not, it doesn't require energy, it is energy. As opposed to somebody else that may be like 6% body fat that weighs 200 pounds and 15, uh, 15 of that is fat. The other 185 is muscle. That person's metabolism is going to be a lot higher because, like I said, muscle and lean mass uh, requires energy, and they have 15 pounds of fat as energy. So, and then your your body's always going to pull. Let me stop talking. Let me let me do a set real quick. I get to rambling with these things. Just remind me because I have a bad memory. Just say um, lean mass burns fat. I actually remember what I was talking about because I said it right before. Um, so yeah, lean mass burns more fat. Um, also, like I was saying, what comes into what comes into account is uh, the the order that energy is uh, consumed by your body. So. If you're eating things that make you store a lot of fat, which, by the way, isn't necessarily doesn't necessarily mean eating fatty foods. It means eating things that your specific body will cause to turn that chemical energy into stored energy, aka fat. And I can't tell you what it is for you because it's different for everybody. Um, best to do blood work with that but your body will always take from food as energy first and then it'll pull from your stored energy aka fat so that's why they say you need to be in a caloric deficit in order to burn fat um because if you're eating more if you're eating more uh I guess energy, caloric, you know, caloric uh, or chemical energy as food, then your body requires throughout the day that extra energy that you consumed is going to be stored in your body if your body can't burn it off. If you eat less than your body needs, it's going to have to pull from your fat in your body. And that's how you lose, not necessarily lose weight, but that's how you burn fat. So really long roundabout way to say, if you want to tighten your chest or your legs or your arms or your back or your face, anything, it comes down to, and when you say tighten up as in burning fat, uh, it all comes down to burning uh, the excess calories that your body requires throughout the day. 
i.e. caloric deficit, which leads to fat loss. So consume less than your body uses and you'll burn fat and you'll tighten up in those areas that you're looking to tighten up in. And again, everybody is different. So you may notice that your arms are getting leaner faster than your stomach or your stomach is getting leaner faster than your legs or, you know, so on and so forth. How tall are, how tall am I? I'm uh, probably like, uh, let's see, today I was probably six foot eight, I think. Minus 11 inches. <laughs> Thank you for explaining in depth. No problem. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, I'm five nine. It's average though. Being shorter makes your muscles work bigger, so. I'm not complaining. I need to get some water, but I don't want to leave my phone again and have it disconnect or do whatever it did last time. So I'm taking you this time back. Six, what? Six two? Damn. That's what's on my brother was. How you doing? So the first set was one thirty five. This set will be. 225. I tend to jump up pretty quickly with weights. Um, more as a, uh, well, I try to get to my working weight pretty quickly. I don't like to have a lot of intermediate sets to where I'm burning, uh, just spending more energy. I like to get to the work, especially since this gym closes at 11 and there's no clock in here. And I always lose track, lose track of time. It's been almost an hour, so it's almost 10. Might only go for around eight. I don't know how this one's gonna be, to be honest. Five eleven. Nice. It's funny, I was just watching a video. It has nothing to do with anything, but just watching a video yesterday about uh, the tallest possible average height of humans, and it was uh, basically the premise was that. Uh, we are, we being humans, are, I think, uh, either four or six inches taller. The average height is four to six inches taller than humans 150, 150 years ago because of diet, nutrition, technology, uh, medicine, that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, they're saying the tallest possible 
potential uh, average height of humans is around seven feet tall, which is crazy. And the tallest human to have ever lived was eight foot 11. I can't even fathom that. But I think he only lived to like 22. So, but they said he was the size of the average adult by uh, elementary school or something like that. Which I'm still barely the size of the average adult, so. <laughs> I'll be in the gym tomorrow at 5 a.m. Nice. Yeah, I don't know how you uh, how you morning people do that. You morning lifters. Kudos to you. I did it in the Marine Corps, and I don't plan on doing it ever again. Especially at 5 a.m. I'm a night owl. I'd rather wake up late, go to sleep late. Because regardless of what the super uh, motivational speakers in a super alpha in your face uh, motivational speakers say about wake up early, go to bed early. How's that any different from wake up late, go to bed late? Aside from the average, you know, nine, nine to five hours. If your job involves uh, something where you have to interact with a client or somebody who, who their hours are, you know, typical nine to five type hours, then sure, wake up early, go to bed early, whatever. But if not, it's literally no difference. Okay, I won't say literally no difference because there is an actual difference, but as far as the schedule and everything goes, total hours, same thing. Basically, I'm defending myself for not wanting to get up early, but also staying up late every day. And of course, it's what you do while you're staying up. I mean, if you're up just shooting the shit, then uh, that's a little different. Use your hours wisely, because you can't get them back. Probably won't go heavier than that since I can only get eight with decent form. If I go any heavier, I'll be compromising my form, so I'll stay here. I'm a night out too, but I have so much energy, energy throughout the day. That's good. Energy is uh, one of the things that's hard to come by. I know a lot of people, one of the main complaints or one of the main reasons why people go to the gym and uh, try to maintain a routine and having a healthy diet and all that. One of the main reasons people do that is to increase their energy throughout the day. So fact that you already have that and you're a night owl 
That's impressive. Your uh, your family must be uh, programmed for little sleep. It's kind of how my dad was. Oh, well, not kind of. Exactly how my dad was. He, uh, <laughs> I always remember in high school, I'd go to sleep. I lived, I was, my room was in the basement. Then uh, his room was in the upstairs. And then there was the main level between, obviously. For those of you that don't know how houses work. <laughs> um, but he would always work in the living room. And whenever I go to go downstairs anyway, around midnight, he'd always be on his computer, sitting there just working away. And then I'd go to go downstairs, go to bed around, you know, one or two, wake up early for wrestling practice. And uh, he'd still be there. I'd go upstairs and he'd still be there on his computer. Don't know if he slept. Don't know. But it was like he was always awake. But he is a master of cat naps. He'll be watching a football game or a movie or anything. We can be anywhere. And if it doesn't require him to be awake, to be alive, he could take a he could take a pretty good nap. He'll be on his computer in typing position. And next thing you know, his eyes will be closed and start to hear some heavy breathing. Look over and he's passed out. And he'll wake up 10 minutes later and act like he never fell asleep in the first place. Continue. Thanks, Andy, your boy. Too kind. I don't know about that, though, because uh, I mean, Michael J. White, I'm pretty sure he's still alive. <laughs> Probably do probably do one more at this weight, go back down to 225 and uh, do a drop set at that weight. So I'll put on a 45 and then two 25s. So it'll actually be uh, uh, 235, but basically burn out at that weight, take off the 25, burn out again, take off the 25 and then burn out there at uh, 135, so it's gonna be really ugly. Lots of grunting and maybe some cursing, heavy breathing, but that's the point. Take these off, take off one of the 45s, put on two 25s, take a rest.
some of these some of these clips that they have here. I'm not the greatest. is one of the only bad things about lifting heavier weights is having to switch out a bunch of plates. You know, I just said, uh, sorry, punch me later. <laughs> I fall asleep like that too. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good skill to have. The cat nap, the power nap. What's his ad? Uh, what do you mean for Instagram? If so, I do not have one yet, but I'll be getting one and I'll let you all know whenever I do. Am I naturally a mesomorph? Um, I don't know. I might be a. What is it? Ectomorph? Is that the skinny one? Um, growing up, I was usually I was usually pretty skinny. Um, but then again, what kid is naturally muscular? Um, I guess you could say that. When I uh, when I started lifting in eighth grade. I got a, I wouldn't necessarily say it was really strong really fast. I was strong for my weight, but I got big fairly easily. Um, But at the same time, it's kind of hard to compare yourself to other people when nobody else really lifted. So all I saw was the change in myself, and I couldn't really compare it to other people. <clears throat> so yeah, I forgot I need to take the clips off, because if you're unaware of what a drop set is, basically, I'm going to do this weight as many times as I can with good form. So basically, as many times as I can, minus one, um, put the weight down, Take off one plate from each side. Same thing. Do as many as I can with good form. Drop it. Take one more plate off. Do it as many times as I can. So I'll end with just the 45 on each side. And that'll be my last set of this. Jump over and do some dumbbell curls.
Oh, it's one that doesn't want to come off. So that is a burner. It's also a test of your muscular endurance, which is why I have a love-hate relationship with drop sets. I hate them because they suck, but I love them for the results. Why don't you use gloves? Rough callous hands are not the bee's knees. Well, they are when you're a home remodeler, like myself. Rough hands means no blisters and not having to uh, wear gloves when handling lumber or stone or other rough materials. I don't remember the last time I got a splinter or a cut just because my hands are so rough and calloused. So, although there is such thing as too rough, or not necessarily rough, but too uh, dry. I have had uh, have had the webbing between my thumb and index finger start to crack because it gets so dry. But other than that, my hands are beneficial for my line of work. But yeah, I don't know. I don't wear gloves because when I work out, I try to try to avoid anything. Or I try to avoid doing things that will assist me that is not absolutely necessary. So whether it be uh, gloves, Elbow wraps, knee knee wraps, elbow and knee sleeves, belt, uh, wrist straps. Yeah, any of that stuff. I try to, I'm not recommending to do that. I'm just saying for me personally, I try to avoid doing all that stuff. That way I have to teach myself, for one, proper form, and two, I have to build up those areas in order to avoid injury or weakness where those things usually make up for a lack of stability 
or durability. So, partially just a macho thing, but also partially uh, and I'm just going to do the necessity, but in order to train myself to, not, to I guess, to not be dependent upon those things. Because in the real world or in real world situations, you might not always have those things. So it would suck to, you know, go to lift some heavy lumber or heavy stones or something like that and end up hurting yourself because you're so li- used to lifting with, you know, straps or a belt or wraps or whatever it may be. Um, so, yeah, simulating reality as often as possible. Going over to curls. What's up, man? Never get like a hair stuck in your shirt or in your pants or something, and it's like tickling you, and you can feel it. So if you can never get it, it's happening to my back right now, and it's annoying. Start, we'll probably start with uh, let's see, 25, 25, 25, 25. Uh, we'll start with 40s, get a nice bicep warm up. Walking funny because I'm carrying my bag and my chalk and a box and my phone. And my hoodie and a towel. So those of you who have been here for the last or last week for the streams, what do you prefer? Landscape or uh, portrait mode? For the stream. Although I don't actually know how to change it or select it as a initial mode, because even now, when I try to rotate it, it's, uh, it tells me to rotate it back to portrait mode. Portrait, landscape. It's your, yeah. Random question, does, does working out help you personally feel young? Yes, very much so. Um, so there was a period of time, I want to say 20... Uh, 16 and 17, or maybe 17 and 18. Yeah, 16 and, or 17 and 18, where I didn't work out as much. 
uh, move from apartment to house and less time for the gym, blah, blah, blah. Excuses, excuses. Anyway, I wasn't going to the gym as much. And um, my knees actually started hurting, which seemed backwards to me because everybody's always like, oh, lifting heavy will hurt your knees, this and that. But when I wasn't lifting as much as and as frequently is actually when my knees started to hurt, uh, lower back started to hurt. Um, and granted, I haven't been sports my whole life, martial arts, you know, contact sports, that kind of stuff my whole life. Um, so it could just be wear and tear from that. But now I feel fine. I still get some lower back uh, tightness, but I've noticed since I've been lifting more and heavier, um, my back recovers more quickly. So, for example, when I wasn't lifting as frequently, um, say I was doing flooring or tile or something where I could constantly bend down and pick stuff up, my back would start to hurt. I'd have to take a break, you know, sit there and do back stretches, twists, all that kind of stuff minute, you know, maybe a minute or so later, I'd be able to go back to it. Now, if I'm doing those motions, I'll still get like tight in my back, but I stop maybe 10, 20 seconds and I feel fine again and I can keep going. So yes, I would say that doing, working out more frequently or period helps me to feel younger. Mentally and physically. And the mental part might actually be a bigger a bigger aspect. Because it sucks to... Sucks to... Whether it be look in the mirror or... Um, do certain motions or actions. And not be satisfied with the way you're performing or the way you're looking or something like that. It's, uh, it's just... It sucks. So, one of the big reasons I'm back in here and hitting it as hard as I can is uh, the mental aspect. Maybe even more so than the physical aspect. Also, I got the hiccups. Um, but also, I wouldn't actually say that's a random question at all. Because uh, that's what I'm here for. Uh, let's see. When are you coming back to do a chest workout? We all need to get rid of our respective birds, Jeff. <laughs> it actually happens to be what the next video is going to be. It's a push-up kind of challenge type slash assessment. The worst is when a hair from the inner thighs is caught in shorts and starts pulling hair. Yeah. I actually uh, have to wear a certain type of fabric because of that, and a um, certain type of belt. Landscape, portrait, either position works as long as your entire body and movement are captured clearly. True, and like I said, um, 
some days um, portrait mode might be better than landscape mode. For the, like today, for example, since I'm doing a, a lot of stand-up stuff today, uh, portrait works good on days where I do maybe like some flat bench or other things like that. Maybe landscape will work better. But like you said, whatever gets the, the full picture. This thing is good for the body. That's very true. <laughs> nice piece, nice pet. Thanks. <laughs> um, dude, you're an inspiration. Real talk. Thanks, man. I try. That's basically the main reason. Well, really, the only reason why I'm uh, doing this on the, you know, this whole thing on YouTube, because, like I said, I've been lifting for a while and uh, or back at it for a couple years now. I actually really never fully stopped, but um been hitting it pretty hard lately but yeah decided to start doing the youtube thing mostly because why not like if i'm already in here five six days a week it's not changing my actual workout routine it's not doing anything like that so why not be in here and actually help other people along their journey What was said, I agree. Wise words. <laughs> hey man, there he is. I didn't see you since he shot dudes in the barracks. <laughs> yeah, fun, fun times. He's married with children. Stop the disrespect. Appreciate it to all of you that are actually here for uh, the education. I'm not saying that you can't be here for, you know, eye candy or whatever, but definitely I respect those of you that have respect. If I may ask what country slash state are you in, here it's 11.30 p.m. I'm in uh, U.S. in Kansas. So it is, uh, I said I've been streaming for 90 minutes, so it's 10.30 here. I agree, lay down real estate. Yes, 10.29 this time. Yeah. What's your view on steroids slash testosterone shots for building mass? Because I've heard a few. Uh, sorry, I lost my spot. I've heard a few swear that nobody can get as big as you are now without them. Um, and this Joshua, Kansas. <laughs> Why is that? Why does that uh, merit so many exclamation marks and question marks? <laughs> um, uh, as far as the whole sterile thing, um, some people might have to take some stuff to get the way I am now. I'm, I mean, I work really hard, but I'm not going to uh, deny that I have good genetics. I haven't done anything as far as uh, PEDs or performance enhancing drugs, even as low as testosterone or anything like that, just because I haven't needed to. Um, <laughs> when I get to the point where I start losing testosterone and start getting smaller, even though I'm still working as hard, will I use them? Maybe. It's hard to say because I'm not in that mind state right now, but who knows? I might uh, I might start doing something when it gets to that point. Um, as far as people that have to do it now or at a younger age, um, as long as you're not doing it and saying that you're not, especially in a professional capacity, I have no problem with it. I actually really respect the guys on YouTube and Instagram and all that 
even though I don't have Instagram. But I, I respect those guys on social media that do steroids and own up to it. Because it's not like just taking steroids is going to make you huge. You still have to work your ass off. Somebody has these weights all sorts of mixed up. 55 and 45 spots and 40s and the 50s. Yes, I'm that guy in the gym. I see stuff out of place. I try to fix it. Love your energy, very inspiring. Thank you. I try, uh, I try to uh, up my energy a little bit because I've been told uh, I get kind of monotone, especially when it comes to educational stuff or you know things along those lines. Things that are more, I mean, this might not be like what some would consider a serious um, you know, profession or hobby, interest, whatever you want to call it. But for me, I've always been really interested in anatomy, uh, physiology, kinesiology, human movement system, all that kind of stuff. So actually educating people is, even if it's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody. I really like to go into a lot of detail, as you guys have probably noticed, but I like to actually teach people and educate people and help people. I gotta, I'm got i not on here <clears throat> just to, you know, work out and flex and say, oh, look how big I am or look how this and that I am. Like, sure, I hope the way I look will get more people to follow and be interested in me so that that could be more people that I can have a positive influence on. So... But anyway, the reason I said that is because uh, whenever I get into teaching mode or education mode, I, I kind of feel like sometimes I get um, kind of monotone and bland with what I'm talking about because it's more, uh, I know, especially on YouTube and all of social media, the thing that's in right now is um, super high energy, like crazy off the wall, uh, you know, almost psychotic levels of energy just to keep these very short attention span uh, Gen Z kids, you know, keep them engaged. When uh, I've, I'm actually fortunate, I've looked at my analytics and I know that pretty much none of you are, you know, Gen Z, some millennials, but I think it was between, um, I want to say 25 to like uh, 45, 50-ish area and above. So, most people uh, are, most of their target demographic is the young, you know, uh, social media heavy kids when, I don't know. Of course, I want to reach as many people as I can so I can help as many people as I can, but you, uh, well, today's a little different apparently, but most of the time, people at you guys' level is what I tend to enjoy talking to and uh conversing with the most because you're more mature and uh, actually interested in interested and able to learn, I guess you could say. Not that they're not, but some people are, some people don't come to YouTube and uh, go to social media to actually better themselves. So even if I lose some some knuckleheads because they want to be a, a certain way. That's perfectly fine with me.
I'm glad the music's not too bad in here, since I don't actually get to uh, listen to music on days and I'm streaming, or not my own personal music anyway. Coming above me to chill. Yes. Agreed. But don't the steroids have a bad effect in the long run? Um, so I've actually heard mixed uh, facts because steroids is kind of one of those. When it comes to things uh, like that, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to get data on it simply because the population of people that would be best suited to test and record those things, i.e. professional athletes or elite athletes, it's not actually legal in those areas. So um, the, the data that they do have is, I wouldn't say by lower level athletes, because there are some elite level athletes that do it and uh, have been able to been a, be in uh, some type of lab test and that kind of thing. But with that being said, from what I hear and what I have read and watched and found in the research, um, it does, but not to the same degree that uh, a lot of people would think. Like the stuff about you know, stuff that it does to your genitals and uh, anger problems and all the other stuff. It's partially true, but not completely. So there was one documentary I watched called like uh, something Icarus. It's like, I don't know, the Icarus effect or uh, something. Maybe it's just called Icarus, actually. Um, there's another one, Bigger, Faster, Stronger. Uh, then I've read some, some stuff in books and articles online with some pretty famous, uh, bodybuilders in their prime or about when they were in their prime and, um, physical effects. Obviously you have all the positive effects like, um, size, mass, strength, um, recovery time, uh, all that good stuff. But then you have... Uh, the only things that I've read that are directly linked to the steroid use would be, um, uh, what was it? Basically decreased, um, uh, testicle size, which it goes back after you stop doing it. Just like, you know, smoking weed decreases your sperm count, but it goes back after you stop. Um, and it doesn't necessarily make you... Um, more angry, but they say it makes you more of what you already are. So if you're sensitive, then it'll make you more sensitive. If you're already an angry person, it'll make you more angry. If you're happy, more happy. Sad, more sad. So they say it makes you more of what you already are. Um, then there are the things like uh, acne and um, what do they call it? Um, I can't remember the scientific name, but man boobs, basically. Um, gynecomastia, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, basically, there are, there are uh, you know, quite a few side effects. I don't know, uh, you know, from research or anything, specifically about long-term stuff, 
But from what I hear, most of the stuff is actually reversible just by uh, abstaining and, you know, weaning yourself off of it. Um, as with anything, there are actually negative effects from stopping it as well. Um, mood swings and some physical changes, all that kind of stuff. Um, but that actually goes with pretty much any drug that you take. So let me read this real quick. Don't be hating on Gen Z. What does he ever do to y'all? <laughs> Nothing at all. Actually, you know what? I don't actually. Oh, wait. No, no, I am talking about Gen Z. I think I, I was almost going to say Gen Alpha, but that's like young, young. Gen Z. <laughs> you didn't do anything to me personally. I'm sorry. Just bring back your beatboxing skills, and that may help, LOL. That video cracks me up. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually. Uh, I've been thinking about doing some different stuff. I wouldn't call myself multi-talented in any in any uh, aspect, but or in any sense of the word, I guess I should say. But there are some things that growing up really poor and having no forms of entertainment will help you uh, help you with as far as adaptation and creating your own entertainment. Actually, my little brother is really good at beatboxing, so I might bring him in on some some funny stuff i actually do have a lot of videos of you know years ago of us beatboxing and stuff that would be pretty funny i might put them in some uh youtube shorts that nate dog was so kind to have informed me about last week light sauce that means closing time soon i think that was the 10 minute warning Hopefully, means I can get like two more sets. I don't even know what number I'm at. Sometimes I get random hiccups. We need a sensible YouTuber with substance in their videos. Thank you. That is what I aim for. And thank you, Cam. Fellow listen up. Miles is broadcasting through the videos and live chat. He's not here for your flirting and other sexualized overtures. Damn annoying. Amen to that. What do I think about German volume training? Would love to see you do 10 sets, 10 reps, 225 flat bench. I've done research on it before. And uh, I've actually, it's kind of been, let me see, I think I got 10 minutes-ish. Um, so I've actually kind of been doing it on accident when it comes to my squats and uh, deadlift days. And... Or when it comes to building mass anyway. For strength, I tend to keep it lower lower reps, higher weight. Um, but German volume training for actual mass, as, it, as it's called. Um, well, I know the volume in German volume tra training is referring to the volume of the workout. But I think it's actually really good for, for mass. Um, but... Again, that's that's just me. There are a lot of things that 
are different for different people. That's one of those things that kind of seems pretty universal. Um, I don't know of anybody that has had negative effects or like plateaued with it. Um, but yeah, it seems like it's pretty much uh, across the board. A, a uh, something, especially if you're used to doing like the um, you know five different workouts, four sets per workout, uh, you know, fifteen plus reps, that kind of thing. If you're trying to build mass, German volume training is actually really good. And one thing that I like about it is it focus. It, it doesn't um, require you to do five, six, seven different workouts each day. You can do one workout, multiple reps, multiple sets, um, high volume, and you can see really good results with that. I know that's good. That's good for people like like me that don't necessarily like to jump between, you know, five, six different workouts every time I come in the gym. Um, It's good for people that don't have a lot of equipment and that don't have access to a gym. Uh, it's good for people, good for people that, um, whenever they come to the gym, maybe it's so super packed that they don't have access to all the equipment or whatever it may be. Or if you just have a, you go to a, a private gym that doesn't have all the equipment, um, you really don't need a lot of stuff. One thing I mentioned last uh, last week was, as far as body weight exercises, I think all you really need is. Uh, pull-ups slash chin-ups, uh, push-ups, squats, and deadlifts, and some kind of variation of all those things. And, um, oh, that's fine. Um, some kind of variation of all those things, and you're, you're solid. Uh, when it comes to in the gym, pretty much the same, as long as you have some kind of uh, in my opinion, an upper body push, an upper body pull, a lower body push, a lower body pull. So for me, I like to do just like my split. Um, I think that's the 10 minute warning. Um, I have a squat day, a deadlift day, uh, upper body push day, so like a bench day, and then an upper body pull day, which would be like what I'm doing today. And really with those as your base, you can do different variations of those things. Um, and even each of those days, you only really need like one major lift. You can do some accessory work, but basically one 1050. Thank you. Um, one major lift for each of those days and then maybe some accessory stuff. But uh, yeah, long story short, <laughs> I always go off on tangents whenever somebody asks me a question. Dermot volume training. It is Partridge Fitness approved. I think we're messing up his workouts with these questions. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm actually, uh, I tend to take longer rest periods between sets than most anyway, just because I like to focus more on strength and uh, and mass. Maybe not a good thing, but I don't really care too much about muscular endurance. Um, just I don't need it for anything necessarily. Um, with what I do, strength strength is most important. Um, some endurance, muscular endurance, that kind of stuff. It'll it'll come with lifting in general. Um, I heard a funny quote by don't actually remember who it was, but some bodybuilder. In an interview, they said, uh, the interviewer said, basically, what do you do? What do you do uh, to gain strength? Lift heavy weights. What do you do to gain size? Lift heavy weights. Well, what do you do for cardio? Lift heavy weights faster. <laughs> so my cardio is I lift faster, but I'm not focused on cardio right now. <clears throat>
bit. That weight again. Everybody has done, or he has done research and it comes back and his steroids aren't that bad. Yeah. It's not a very difficult concept. I think the big, uh, the big fuss about steroids is it's performance enhancement, performance enhancing. <clears throat> Honestly, to be completely out, to be completely honest, if we wanted sports to be more exciting I think steroids should be allowed in sports because what's oh, somebody used the wrong exit. What's more interesting than seeing big 250, 300 pound football players slam into each other, big 350, 400 pound football players slam into each other. I personally wouldn't do it just because I don't need to. And it's not my philosophy to try to reach those levels by unnatural means, but to each their own. Exactly, gladiators. Um, yeah, somebody just stormed right out of that door and didn't even close it. I would go close it, but I'm not trying to get blamed for that. Um, I feel like I was going to say something else, I don't remember. I think Rhino is trying to get in. Joke on name Miles and the bank in the back. Oh, like Miles Morales? I think that's what you're talking about. Have I played around with boxing for cardio? If so, is it worth it? Yeah. Um, Maybe not necessarily boxing. Well, Miles, it's time for me to go. Looking forward to seeing you next live. All right, man. I'll see you, Casey. Um, take the shirt off. I don't know if I'm allowed to. Oh, my God. They just yelled out that the code for that door is one, two, three, four, five. Maybe you shouldn't have said that on a stream, but that's like your password being password. Um... Wait, what was I responding to? Oh, yeah, boxing is cardio. Yeah, I used to do uh, martial arts pretty much a lot, a lot of my life. Um, and it's excellent cardio. Uh, even if you're not kicking and all that kind of stuff, I would recommend kickboxing over boxing just because kicking is so much harder than punching. Um, but... Yeah, I love any kind of combat sports for cardio. I love it. Boxing, kick, kickboxing, Muay Thai, Taekwondo, wrestling, jiu-jitsu. As a matter of fact, wrestling and jiu-jitsu are even harder than throwing kicks and punches. Um, so, yeah, let me ask them. I got like five minutes, right? Yeah. Okay, just make it, sir. Hmm. I might get yelled at, but, or not yelled at, but I'll do uh, one set with my shirt off if these uh, employees aren't over here anymore. <sighs> Just a quick one. one lady that works here that's very uh very much a stickler on rules so i think i well i did one my last back workout or not my last but maybe two weeks ago oh well i'm only doing one set anyway they told me to put it back on it was only plan planning on having it off for one anyway i'll try to do it really quick Yeah. <sighs> 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 
All right, that's all you get. Now, if I can find how this thing works. Uh, all right, put these dumbbells up. We can go home. And if this is your first time tuning in, I uh, I do about an hour. Usually stream till midnight. I hope the lights are off off now. Gotta find my thing to put my chuck back in. If the mask enforcer is over there, I'll put my shirt over my face. But yeah, like I was saying, uh, I continue to stream for about an hour after my workout. Talk to the people. Talk to my people. Um, actually, now that I think of it, this might be a little awkward because uh, my setup in my truck was for landscape. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it set up very well with it being portrait but adapt improvise overcome I need my flashlight. Yeah, I know. It gets pretty dark in here. No mask lady. We're oh, good. Quick, or just, yeah, quick observation. Your chest doesn't appear as huge as your arms. Do you put more emphasis on your arms and chest? Um, I just actually get pretty good pumps. <laughs> oh shit! I'm walking out with their towel. Um, I just get pretty good pumps. So when I don't work chest, it just looks smaller. Uh, and I will prove that in my next video. Almost stole your towel. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. You too. <clears throat> um, it just was like Metro PCS when it's time, when it's time. <laughs> that is true. If they could legally do it, they would probably pick me up and throw me out of there. <clears throat> All right, let's see what kind of setup we can get going. Um, oh, there it is, see, there it is. <laughs> I feel like you were an Olympic medalist in the past life. Thank you. I mean it. Um, it would be cooler if it was in a current life, but... <laughs> I know what you mean, and I appreciate the compliment. 
All right, let's get this. Um, so, again, the OGs know what I'm about to do with this. My uh, light plus paper towel technique. My ghetto rigged uh, lighting apparatus over here, but. So, get that towel, wrap it up twice. <laughs> Y'all can laugh all you want, but this is the future of lighting. <clears throat> and turn my phone brightness up so I can actually see. All right, there we go. Like a filter, the paper towel. No, it's. Here, let me turn my camera around. So I put, damn, my camera's dirty. Hold on, let me wipe that thing off. <laughs> and it's still the same. But yeah, I basically put this light with two paper towels uh, wrapped around it up on the dash up there to get some good lighting. It also alerts the cops that I got some bright object in front of my face. Hopefully they don't think it's a phone. Do I want your phone number? No, nah, not really. Uh, are you enjoying the new year thus far? Yeah. It's cool. I'm working on a, uh, a tile job at um, my client's. He, <clears throat> without giving up away too, too much information, he's a real estate investor. He has a lot of houses, and the one he currently lives in is a, actually a mansion out here. And I landed a tile job. It's like a 950 square foot of tile doing it out here, which is why I referenced tile a couple times during the stream. Um, hmm. Where can I put this? Do I not slide around? Um, you know what, I'll just hold it in my hand. Give me one second, let me put this tripod on here. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty big, pretty big tile job. It's actually tile plus, um, <clears throat> sneak a photo of that mansion one day. Uh, I actually have some, and I was, uh, thinking so i have to get well actually i talked to the owner uh before i even started i told him i might emphasis on might might start doing streams um you know because i was going to start so my business is called partridge custom works uh it's a legit llc but um i was going to start streaming maybe on Twitch or something with that. Just because at the time it was, I thought it was chalk on my face. Um, at the time it was just what I knew, or I watched Twitch a lot. And um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, so I was gonna stream on there to show my work, but this is a little, uh, maybe a little foreshadowing. Well, not maybe, it is some foreshadowing. Basically right now, I'm deciding between whether I want to um, make a, a separate YouTube channel for my professional, or this is professional, but my remodeling stuff. So it'll be woodworking and uh Home remodeling, custom furniture, custom woodworking, all that kind of stuff. Basically deciding whether I want to do a, a separate page for that or slowly integrate Partridge Fitness and Partridge Custom Works into one thing. Of course, uh, in person, my 
Partners Custom Works LLC will still be its own separate entity. But as far as the socials go and uh, YouTube, integrating them into one thing to where I don't know what I would call it. I haven't even, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But um, basically making it more of a lifestyle channel as opposed to just, you know, just fitness or just remodeling. Um, kind of an all around deal. Uh, by the way, if you hear something sliding around over there, it's my, that it's a, a saw blade for my circular saw that I have in here. I have it in the door, pop it on the side and it's going to be sliding back and forth. So I'm not running over any curbs or side swiping anybody. Not today anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's where that's where I'm at. As far as let's see who else that. Uh, why the change of career? Alice Quiz. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Um, Alice Quiz. Alice Quiz. Um, just assume that I'm saying it right. That name. <laughs> um, Um, no particular, like, earth-shattering reason or anything. Just, um, one of the, re well, there's two main reasons. One being the fitness industry in person is different than I thought it would be, uh, as far as, like, personal training, that kind of stuff. Um, I... Because I just left the Marine Corps, I expected it to be be more hardcore. Um, you know, I was still in that Marine Corps mindset. I was I was expecting to like be running people into the dirt. You know, you know, get on your face, give me twenty pushups, like that kind of stuff. And uh, reality is, if you, I mean, there, I'm sure there are people who would respond to that, maybe former military or family military family or so on and so forth, but, or just hardcore people. But um, in my area anyway, the law of Kansas out here, uh, there's not as, there's not very many hardcore folk like that out here. So um, it was just mm, unexpected is I guess a, a, an appropriate word. Um, not what I was planning on. So I got a little burnt out on training the same type of people, which would be people that say they want to lose weight or want to get stronger, want to get you know more muscle, that kind of thing, and then not do, basically, aside from uh, doing the workouts in the gym with me while I'm training them, they wouldn't be doing anything else to better themselves, obviously lying about their nutrition, obviously lying about workouts, that kind of stuff. So it's, it, it became more of a babysitting thing. Like, you know, here's what you should do. And they end up not doing it anyway. Um, sorry, I saw those red and blue lights. <laughs> you get distracted by those easily. Um, so yeah, there's that. And on the other, on the other uh, side is with remodeling. Maybe I shouldn't have my arm on the armrest so it's not shaking as much. Um, with the remodeling or from that side, what, what drew me over there was pretty much all growing up. I, uh, on my mom's side, most of my family either owned or worked for construction or remodeling companies. So growing up, I would help uh, help cousins and uncles and that kind of stuff, help them with their, their jobs, um, go to the job site with them, learn new things and so on and so forth. And I actually, I remember the first, um, first time I ever stepped foot into a house that was just like down to the studs 
was so confused. I was like, what the hell am I looking at? How is this a house? You know, where is, <laughs> where is the, where are the walls? Where are the light switches? Where is everything? And just seeing the whole process. And this was like elementary school and I went from passing them nails and screws and hammers and that kind of stuff to actually being able to set the nails and screw in the screws and use a drill and all that kind of stuff. Um, then after high or after, uh, well, once I got into high school, I took every drafting and, uh, woodworking, home ec, all those classes I could. After the high school, joined the Marine Corps, became a combat engineer. Um, and I mean, so basically I have a lifetime of experience with it. Um, so yeah, I knew a lot about it already. And the fitness thing was, I mean, I've been into fitness for a long time, but fitness instruction is relatively, well, at the time it was relatively new. Um, by the time I stopped, I had actually been doing it for around six years, including the four in the Marine Corps. But like I said, those four in the Marine Corps kind of primed me for an unrealistic civilian experience. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. When I used to work at a, uh, a company that basically, we did a lot of hardscape, landscape, well, actually not landscape, we did hardscape stuff, so like uh, retaining walls, pools, uh, drainage, all that kind of stuff. Sorry, let me see what you guys are saying. Sneak in front of that mansion. Yeah, yeah. I I have some already, so I'm 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 kind of a well not kind of I'm I'm a perfectionist. So, like I said last week, <laughs> usually profession per, perfectionists are also procrastinators. So I like to I like to make sure like I don't I I get that people like to see it, but I don't really like posting in progress stuff just because it's like I don't want people to think like see a certain step or, you know, see it in progress and be like, oh man, that's crazy. That looks bad or anything like that. I would rather have the full thing uh, start to finish and then I can show the start in, uh, in progress and then the end all in one video or one time lapse, whatever it may be. Um, so as far as content with that, in that perspective uh, or in that regard, I should say, I... I'm a little less uh, consistent than I should be. But again, it's because I'm a perfectionist and also a procrastinator at the same time, which is not a great, <laughs> not a great combination. Nice contract you're getting. Yeah, I've been pretty fortunate. Actually, this year, or, uh, sorry, 2020, I know it was pretty bad for a lot of people for most people, but um, I was fortunate that with the stimulus checks and people getting unemployment from not working, that more people being in their house, um, plus having extra money, I was getting more contracts than you know 2019, which seems crazy that 2020 is already over. I swear, it seems like a really long dream. It seems like a big, elaborate, lucid dream. And now it's 2021. Like, I don't know if you, any, I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but 2020 kind of didn't feel real. You know what I mean? It felt like I watched a whole movie series, a whole like, you know, three trilogies of some crazy movie, and then it's 2021 now. Yeah, he's back. That's right. I'm back. That would be nice to watch too. Well, I got one. <laughs> if I even get half of the people that uh, are interested in seeing me on this, then that'd be a great start. Or even less than half. If I get one person, that's already a great start. And I do have one, so it's a great start. Okay, Black Business Owner in the house. 
that you better utilize YouTube and every other day or every other time you get your business on. Yeah, true. So my one thing that uh, goes along, one of the one of the downfalls that also goes along with being a perfectionist is um, I don't like to hire just anybody. Like I don't want to hire just anybody. So my main and pretty much only focus with this is uh, growing this company for my kids. So I have two kids in case you guys don't know. Um, one is about 11, 11, 12 weeks old. The other is just turned two. Um, actually, no, no, he's turning two tomorrow. Uh, so my whole goal is to grow the business for them because all of the best, most successful, most stable businesses are typically second, third, fourth generation businesses. Um, I basically want to do all of the hard work, all the leg work, all of the grinding and, you know, all the, the, the ugly stuff so that my kids can pick up with something that is already like set in stone and they basically just have to pick it up and run with it. Um, because we all know, no matter what side you're on politically, that gap is widening and you got to choose a side, unfortunately. And I would like to be well off or at least have my, even if I'm grinding my whole life and, you know, never get to enjoy my, uh, the fruits of my labor. Although I do, I'm not saying I'm just a fucking workhorse and do nothing but work. I enjoy myself, but I would rather grind and, uh, do the ugly stuff and let my kids still work hard, obviously, but let them have a little bit easier, a little bit easier life. Uh, that's good. A man of many talents. I like your energy. Continue being blessed and let, us, let this new year be the best for you. Yeah, man. Thank you very much. I intend to make the most out of it that I can. You should link your Insta to this YouTube channel. Um, as soon as I get one, I will. I'm, honestly, there's no real reason why I don't have one yet, but um, I intend on getting one very soon. Even I'll look into getting one sometime this week. I'm so I'm focused on getting this video out there too. Um, but yeah, trying to get the video out, trying to looking at uh, options for I guess not options for Instagram. I know how Instagram works. I used to have it, but um getting some material or some uh building up some content for that although that's a uh, kind of on the fly as you go type deal um by the way if you guys hear my turn signal going really fast uh one of the bulbs are out but the front and the rear turn signals still work so <laughs> it's just hard to justify actually getting it getting that extra bulb you know i i don't actually like to go to mechanic shops i do all the work on my truck for myself, uh, unless it's something that's like serious. Like I change my oil, change all my fluids, and uh, do any other small stuff that can be done within a couple hours. Um, but the bulb is, uh, no, I'm a Gemini. Wait, what? How did you know that? That's weird. <laughs> I mean, not weird, that's kind of cool, but yeah, I'm a Gemini. Um, it's funny because I read the last message first from Dion that said, uh, what, you know, Taurus Cancer Virgo, and then I said, I'm a Gemini. Then I looked up one and said, you're giving me Gemini vibes. That's interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't even remember what I was saying. I'm so all over the place. 
my brain. Oh yeah, yeah. With my stuff with my truck. Uh doing all the work under myself and not being able to justify uh changing one your turn signal still work. This is going too fast because one bulb is out. All right, I'm gonna put this down real quick. I'm gonna reverse into this parking spot. And I'm gonna turn this light off so I can actually see. It's coming back on in about 20 seconds. My brother is parked right next to me. He's uh, in from out of town. So he's staying with me for a little bit. But the one that you, some of you may have seen me working out with last, uh, last week. So here we are. Back to the... Oh, that's my music. I was like, what music am I hearing? Um, so I know I can actually read this chat. Honestly, I think you should separate the channels. To be honest and respectful, on here you are viewed as fitness, and I can't do so. You might want to keep certain comments separate from the business. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good point. I didn't think about that. I was thinking more from my perspective, or from my aspect, as far as the content that I'm putting out. But I didn't even think about comments and that kind of stuff. So, good point. Duly noted. That's why I talk to you guys about this stuff. Because multiple heads are better than one. Did Marine Corps give you a helpful discipline? Yes. Um, it. So, yeah, discipline is a good word for what it has helped me with. Um, the Marine Corps, to be completely honest, wasn't too difficult for me. Just because um, I, the, a lot of the things that is hard for a lot of things that are more hard for most people were actually easy for me, like um, long boot camp, being away from family, um, being in a shitty in shitty situations where you maybe don't. Uh, and this sounds really bad. It's not a sob story, but uh, being in situations where you may have less sleep, less food, um, high stress situations, all that kind of stuff. Most people uh, did, never had to experience that. And for me, it was a lot easier, especially in boot camp, where everybody's, you know, being yelled at, and it's loud and really crazy and hectic. Um, a lot of people kind of broke. There are a lot of people that broke under pressure and just kind of lost their mind. Uh, not like lost their mind, like they went insane or something, but lost lost their their bearing, um, didn't know how to handle it. And yeah, some like most people just froze because quick little uh, educational fact for you guys. You know how they say fight or flight, and this is actually from psychology books that I used to read because I used to be really big into psychology. Um, they always say fight or flight, but it's actually freeze, flight, then fight. And that's the natural process that every brain, every human brain goes through. Uh, actually, not even human, every animal brain goes through uh, in a response to perceived danger. So in a nutshell, without going on one of my long useless uh, rants, <laughs> um, freeze, flight, then fight, <clears throat> basically means, say, um, you, 
get into a situation where you hear a loud explosion or something from behind you, maybe like, you know, a quarter mile away, you hear a little loud explosion. 99% of the time, maybe even higher, most people in their brains will, uh, there will be a process of freeze, flight, then fight. And as you go, it's basically like an algorithm. It's if this, then that. It goes through each one. If one doesn't work, it'll go on to the next one. So with freeze, if you freeze in place, you hear a loud noise, you freeze. Um, let's say you, you turn and you freeze and you see the, the danger. First of all, you freeze because if you're frantically moving and jostling yourself around, you can't actually see what's going on. The deer in the headlights effect. Um, you freeze to assess the situation and then flight will always be the first reaction if it's uh even if it doesn't physically reach your muscles to make you flee in a certain direction flight will always be the first reaction with your with your um uh your central nervous system and like your adrenaline and all that kind of stuff then if running isn't feasible for whatever reason maybe you have your family with you and they're not as fast as you or you have some property to defend, or you're just in a, in a you know, uh, based on your physical position, you can't actually run, then you go into fight mode. So it's actually, uh, people say fight or flight, but like I said, freeze, flight, then fight. It's actually like an order, uh, an order of operations for what the process is that your brain goes through whenever there's any perceived danger. So just a random fact. Um, so let me see. JW, I know. Yeah, I'm a very Gemini. <laughs> That's good planning for your kids, Miles. Thank you. I need to put seven shingles on my roof. Do you think I would fall down? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it depends on the slope of your roof, your footwear, your balance, your proprioception. It depends on a lot of things. But uh, hopefully, if you do go do that, I hope you don't fall because that would be tragic. <laughs> um, are you into real estate investing outside of your biz? Um, not necessarily investing. I have flipped two houses, but there were also houses that I lived in, um, basically just to move up and up into bigger houses. Um, the first one was like, um, I don't even know if I'm, if it's smart to say money on this, but basically the first one was like maybe middle to lower price for this, uh, for the Kansas City area. Second one was medium high and this one is high. Um, so basically what I did is every time I moved into a house, because I had the skills, I would fix it on my off time, um, do a bunch of, uh, updates and, you know, basically remodel the house, then sell it for more than I bought it for. Um, the next house, I would use that money, put it into the next one, uh, so on and so forth. And now we're here. Plus, actually my wife, uh, <clears throat> has been moving up and up with her job so it's uh yeah we're both doing better better and better every year holy crap i used to watch your videos back when i was in my teens unfortunately i wasn't precious enough in keeping up and getting to see you still around no man it's not you it has nothing to do with you being persistent it was all me i'm glad you're i mean you are the persistent one you're here still now i'm glad you are too but yeah, I really appreciate it. Uh, unfortunately, I've been, if I would have kept up with it, um, it would have been pretty much 10 years at this year. And they say, uh, well, from what I observe in most, uh, most things in the entertainment world, 10 years is usually around the time that most people, as long as they're consistent for 10 years, 10 years is the, about the mark that people start to see some real um, 
I don't even want to say fame, but get some real recognition, basically. I know with with today's uh, state, uh, as far as social media and that kind of stuff, it's there are some people that kind of spring up, you know, pop up out of nowhere. But usually that's because of a you know viral type situation, which I'm honestly not a viral type person. I don't, uh, I don't know. A lot of the times, I mean, there are times when people just genuinely see something or something happens to them or something along those lines but i feel like there are a lot of a lot of the uh youtubers and social media people now kind of seek that like i need to make a viral video so i can you know explode and get and get uh famous quick and you know so on and so forth um but at the same time a lot of those people kind of fall off pretty quickly as well because their viral videos are kind of uh, especially with the attention span of people nowadays and instant gratification and all that kind of stuff, viral videos are good for being viral videos. A lot of them, some of them do uh, continue to make videos like that, but viral videos are usually viral videos for a reason because it's something that's out of the ordinary um, and is not, you know, necessarily normal or something that doesn't happen all the time. So, um, yeah, not necessarily trying to be a viral video type person, trying to be a steady, um, pumping out good content. And eventually, hopefully, more people will notice that I have um, some type of education and uh, substance to bring to YouTube. And people want to continue watching me to increase their their knowledge. I was just scrolling up and up and up without actually looking so now i'm going to scroll way down um, oh yeah somebody asked about the um the marine corps uh, uh discipline yeah miss kokenji i didn't even finish that whole i didn't finish answering that whole question um did it give me help with discipline so yeah like i was saying um yes as far as discipline goes um when it comes to basically what i call discipline uh or my my personal rendition of the definition of discipline would be um doing things that doing something that you don't necessarily want to be doing or doing something that you don't necessarily uh, isn't isn't the easiest thing for you to be doing in that moment or at that time or whatever it may be, um, but doing it and doing it anyway because you know in the long run this is what's going to benefit you um, and this is what's going to be best for your life, your business, your career, whatever it may be. Um, so in that aspect, yes, um, getting up early all the time, going out purposefully into bad weather because uh, they always say if it ain't raining it ain't tra- you ain't or if it ain't raining we ain't training um, purposely doing things to take us out of our comfort comfort zone um, yeah and basically breaking us quote unquote breaking us down and building us up into kind of a, it sounds bad but kind of like a robotic uh go-getter hard charger type mentality to where if there's something uh if there's something that you know needs to be done you won't hesitate to just do that thing so yes in that aspect yeah uh it has definitely helped with discipline um but like i was saying say or like i said before um there are certain aspects of the marine corps that I didn't actually didn't actually improve uh, who I am or how I live, that kind of thing, just because it was already I already kind of had that uh, discipline in certain areas to begin with. So, for example, uh, kind of like tasks. There, when I was growing up, there were a lot of tasks that I had to do that I didn't necessarily want to do, like cleaning chores all that kind of stuff um but i mean even even down to like 
scrubbing walls and you know cleaning the little cracks on the baseboards and all kinds of stuff um there was a lot of that that um in the marine corps they make you do a lot of they call them fuck fuck games uh basically they they fuck with you and make you do seemingly uh seemingly innocuous seemingly unimportant things that have that have no purpose and they do it over and over and over again until you kind of just like get into a you know robotic kind of state of mind to where you don't even ask questions anymore you just do the thing it sounds really sinister um but it's actually to condition you well it, it basically everything goes to combat like you if somebody gives you an order if your superior gives you an order um you don't want to sit there and be like oh well if i do this then this if i do this and that you just need to follow the orders and you know carry it carry it out as they say when they say it because it's what's going to help the, the whole platoon the whole company the town whatever it may be um so in that aspect i was already conditioned to kind of trust trust the leadership trust those above uh quote unquote above me uh i was always taught you know things like respect your elders um you know please thank you yes sir yes ma'am all that kind of stuff um so there would all there would always be like behind the drill instructors backs and stuff there would always be people like talking shit at every chance you know every chance they got when for me i was like you know i don't know why everybody's talking shit so much like this is pretty normal pretty normal stuff it's not that uh it's not that bad so um but yeah anyways long long answer to say yes the the marine corps did definitely help me with discipline miles you have a radio voice thank you you know i don't really like to talk about myself like um compliment myself a lot but if there's one thing that I do like about myself, it's my voice. And uh, I've been told more than anything, more than any other aspect of me physically, um, I've been told by a lot of people that I have a nice voice. So I guess this works. So thank you. Yes, keep it separate. I run a channel of muscle men and I can be over 75,000 followers. Trust me, keep it separate will do i will take your advice it's a beauty and gun for me <laughs> but i appreciate that do you think you would have stayed in longer if you were in another branch like the air force uh actually no i well i guess i can't say no so when i joined i was young and dumb I'm not saying i you know if i could go back if i had to do it all over again i definitely would rejoin simply because of the benefits that I got from it but when I joined and I've told this to um, family members and friend close friends and that kind of stuff that always wonder why I didn't stay in for longer because when I joined I was very uh, very motivated very like hard charger um, sorry I'm trying to find my chapstick in my bag last time I found it in like 0.5 seconds but uh, I don't know if it's even in here now um, but anyway yeah I whenever I first joined I um, I can't find it um, whenever I first joined I was planning on staying in for 20 years at least 20 years uh, retiring you know doing that whole thing but the main reason why I didn't was the difference between Japan and the US when it came to duty stations and that kind of stuff. So whenever I first joined, I went to boot camp, uh, combat training, MOS training, all that in uh, San Diego. But then when I joined or when I went to my first duty station, it was in Japan. So I did two years out there. While I was out there, <clears throat> I went to I was put on a MU, which is a Marine Expeditionary Unit. I went to Thailand, Philippines, Hong Kong, Guam, Singapore, Indonesia, and Australia. Um, 
it was all humanitarian stuff like uh, typhoon relief, that kind of stuff. Um, so we did get to have some fun out there as well. But in Japan, the Marine Corps was very different uh, from the States. So since I was there first, it was so my basically my experience was boot camp, combat training and all that, which was very hardcore, very intense. And then went to my first duty station, which was Japan. And it was very old school out there. So like you see in the movies, people getting, you know, face rubbed in the dirt, take you back behind the hill, getting beat up like that. It was like old school stuff that you would see in those like, you know, stereotypical Marine Corps movies. Um, and that was actually the type of stuff that I was into. That was the reason why I joined. I was very hardcore. Like I wanted to experience that. So I got to experience all that when I was out in Japan. Then whenever my time was up in Japan, they sent me to North Carolina and it was a completely different world. It was like, it was comparatively, it was terrible. So when I was in Japan, um, every rank had to show respect to ranks above them. So a private would show respect to PFC, PFC, the Lance Corporal, Lance Corporal, Corporal, Sergeant, Staff Sergeant, so on and so forth. Um, in Japan, you would never see a Lance Corporal talking to a corporal like they're just buddy buddy, you know, you know, or like at a bar, or just you know, shooting the shit. They would always address them by their rank, uh, be very respectful, uh, render the the proper greeting of the day, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I was really into that because it seemed like very. It was it was very traditional. And it, and it was like basically the reason I joined. I wanted to be I wanted to be a part of that, like kind of like movie movie esque Marine Corps. So when I got stationed in North Carolina afterward, it was completely different. There were, you know, PV, uh, PFCs and Lance Corporals talking to sergeants and staff sergeants like they're best friends and, you know, not really respecting uniform regulations and not really not being professional at all. The uniforms were all like way uh out of regulations and going there it was hard because i came from japan it was hard to not like be that guy like i wanted to correct every single person that i saw because i was always like basically a book of knowledge when it came to uniform regulations and uh rules and guidelines all that kind of stuff um so i, I really liked that a lot um and one thing that that made me realize how different everything actually was in Japan, there were a couple Marines that we called, quote unquote, shit bags. Um, and they would get, you know, get their ass ripped all the time and we'd fucking chew them out and discipline, you know, all that kind of stuff. When they got when they also PCS, uh, which is primary change of station, when they went to their new uh, duty station in the States, their platoon was they were getting all kinds of awards and commendations because of how good, how like great their uniforms were, how good they were, how, like how much knowledge they had and all that kind of stuff. Uh, how good their test, like uh, physical fitness tests, combat fitness tests, how high their scores were and their, how high their scores and marks were. When in Japan, they would be considered quote unquote a shit bag. So one day I had a couple of Marines come up to me and a couple of Marines from my old platoon in Japan they actually knocked on my barracks door. They were all being super respectful. Uh, and like I said, these were the quote unquote shit bags back in Japan. Came to my door and knocked on it, stood at parade rest. Um, they're like, Corporal, I just want to, you know, thank you for being so hard on us. You always told us that you did it because not because you wanted to discipline us, but because you didn't want other people to call you out and uh, didn't want us to look dumb in front of other people. So you took it upon yourself to uh teach us and educate us on these things so that other people wouldn't have to and at that moment it was just kind of like everything clicked or everything um <clears throat> that that huge gratification uh or satisfaction came from like i saw the product that i was working so hard on um yeah and those marines thanked me and they, you know i get it now i get that you weren't just being a dick and this and that kind of thing so uh yeah that was Really cool. I don't think that had anything to do with the question that I just answered, but yeah, that was, I guess that was a little 
story. Oh yeah, it had to do with uh, why, uh, or if I think I would have stayed in longer if it was a different branch. But yeah, stuff like that. That just shows the difference between uh, the states and uh, Japan. So I just kind of got soured on the whole experience whenever I went back to uh, went back to the states. You were in essence, trust me, you, you've gone about all man. Yeah, that's true. But also, look where I am now. <laughs> Didn't stay consistent with it, and now I'm not necessarily back to square one, but not where I could be if I would have been consistent with it. I was actually watching female UFC in Korea, and you were in the recommendation by. Oh, nice. <laughs> Well, they're actually recommending me again. That's pretty cool. Uh, most viral videos is like the most amusing now. It's hot today, but it's an afterthought later. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. Games to get you out of your comfort zone sounds like my job at the prison hospital. You work at a prison hospital, huh? But yeah, that's... That's all. That's mostly what the Marine Corps was. Games, bullshit game. Well, not the Marine Corps. Boot camp. It's bullshit games to try to get you out of your, take you out of your comfort zone and break you down and build you back up into what they want you to be. Random question. Anything you've learned on your hair journey? I know this. Um, trim. Trim your hair. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you were here in the beginning of the stream or last week's night again, but I made the mistake of thinking that I could, for some reason, think uh, thinking that my hair was impervious to split ends and uh, weather damage and all that kind of stuff. And I was very wrong. So I didn't moisturize as much as I should have. Uh, although I, I did I did a decent job of moisturizing. Pretty much every time I took a shower or got in the shower, I, when I would get out, I'd put some kind of uh, moisturizer in it. But I also didn't realize that you had to do like a scalp treatment, a deep conditioner, uh, sometimes an overnight thing, uh, like overnight masks if you want to, the type of pillowcase you use. Um, what else? That hot is actually bad. So like even hot water and a lot of I've heard a lot of people say put coconut oil, coconut oil and like a hair dryer, uh, you know, blow dryer, put the heat on it, all that kind of stuff. The heat is bad for it. Um, I've never actually treated my hair, so like color or bleaching or anything like that. So that's really good because apparently that's one of the top things that will damage your hair. Um, but yeah, trims. They recommend. Uh, like I said, my wife's mom used to own a salon and she recommends getting trims her and uh stuff i've read online uh it's a hot water strips and natural oil yeah true um but they recommended uh trims every i want to say you can say like eight to twelve weeks or something like that so i do it every two months basically now i mean after like three and a half, well, basically four years of not even trimming it once. Um, so, yeah, I'd say the biggest things I learned would be trimming on a, on a consistent basis, you know, every two or three months. Um, doing some kind of scalp treatment, not using, well, not, not washing your hair very often, actually. So I, I probably wash my hair every week and a half ish but every time i get in the shower i still rinse it and you know pick it out detangle it and all that kind of stuff that way if there's any like physical um you know contaminants or dust dirt that kind of stuff it all gets out of there but the natural oils stay in my hair um and those are i say those are the and, and then yeah no don't uh don't bleach it don't straighten it, uh, don't color it, all that kind of stuff, because that stuff, actually, I don't think coloring is necessarily that bad, but especially bleaching. 
try not to do anything, any put any chemicals or anything like that in your hair. Um, but yeah, I'd say those are the main things. And then of course there are little things like uh, what type of pillowcase you use and what types of hair stuff you use and all those specific things. But yeah, um, <laughs> I talked about it a little bit earlier in the stream, but uh, whenever, well, basically, I don't, I don't even say whenever I first started growing my hair. Basically, up until about three months ago, I never trimmed my hair at all. And the ends of my hair, maybe like the, you can kind of see it here, <clears throat> but the ends of my hair were a lot lighter. Like the, like the, the, like last six inches of my hair were much lighter than you know especially towards the roots but the rest of my hair um and i was just thinking it's you know lightening up because of the sun or whatever it may be which is yes that's the, that's the case but also it's because of damage so whenever i went to my uh mother-in-law and asked her how much she would recommend I trim off, quote unquote trim. Um, she was hesitant to tell me because she knew I wanted to keep my hair as long as possible. But she said about five inches. So if I would have been getting if I would have been getting trims on a regular basis, you know, every uh, two months or so, two or three months, it would have been maybe like an eighth of an inch trimmed off every uh every time i went in so which your hair is supposed to grow i can't remember exactly it's something it's somewhere around six inches per uh six inches per year so basically a half an inch per month is what it, is what most hair will grow if you go in every two or three months trim off an eighth of an inch uh essentially your hair is going to grow the six inches is with trims um, so essentially after four years, your hair should be around two feet long. If you're constantly getting trims, my hair was over two feet long. It was about, I think it was like 28 inches long, but I never got any trims. So I ended up having to get, uh, around five, five to six inches cut off of it. So instead of it being four feet long after, uh, or no, sorry, two feet long after four years, it then ended up being, you know, 21, 22 inches long after four years because I wasn't getting trims. So because I didn't get trims, it ended up being shorter in the long run when I could have just been getting trims and it would have been a lot healthier and so on and so forth. So yeah, that's what I've learned from this, uh, this hair journey of mine. <laughs> So boot camp breaks you down and builds you up into who they want you to be. Always been curious about the process and interested in, in how certain personalities seem to seem harder to break than others. Yeah. Yeah, that's very much a thing. So essentially, um, in boot camp, they tend to single out the weaker people, basically like <clears throat> If they're going around the squad bay yelling and throwing stuff and, you know, acting crazy, they'll look for the people that, that they get a reaction from. The stalwart, stoic, like, stone face people, they usually, I mean, they'll get in their face just to test them. But if they stay like that, they'll usually pass on. So in boot camp, um, because I didn't give them a reaction for anything, they didn't fuck with me a lot. But there were like three people specifically that I can remember. I even remember their names. Three people uh, specifically that I remember that they were constantly hounding because they all they had to do was look in their direction and they could smell the fear emanating from their body. Like that's how scared some people get. And those people are the ones that they that they target um, because the people that don't get a react that, that they don't get a reaction from they're already pretty much the type of person that they want you to be so molly maybach thank you thank you I'm, i'll try keep killing it i will try um 
but yeah, so those people, the people that are, um, like I said, more stalwart, they don't really fuck with them uh, because there's no reason to. But the people that they get a reaction from, the people that are really scared or, um, you know, finicky, the people that want to quit, the people that want to give up and run away and hide and they're really timid, those are the people that they tend to try to break and um, rebuild them. So, handy bro, I wouldn't have made it in boot camp. <laughs> well, that's why they say, uh, uh, what was it? I don't even remember the populate or the percentage. It was like less than two percent of the population will end up being going to and going through and completing boot camp. Let's see. The trans girl in boot camp. Oh, they would have thrown me into the swamp. <laughs> well, luckily in San Diego, there is no swamp. Now in North or South Carolina, where the other boot camp is, that might be a different story. But now, actually, to be honest, I don't know what the policies are on uh, as far as um, gender and sex uh, in the military. I know when I joined, they still had the don't ask don't tell policy which is basically um they they say don't at uh they won't ask about your sex gender uh sex gender all that kind of stuff and you don't tell them about it so i think it was still kind of in like a gray area um i actually remember going out with my recruiter and talking to some kids that were at a skate park was like i don't know why they took me but he was just talking to some kids trying to recruit some kids um and one of them mentioned that they're gay and he like seemed to shift his focus from that person so i'm wondering if it was like gay people weren't allowed or uh it was just frowned upon in the military or what i don't know i didn't uh that was kind of gray. i remember yeah i don't know i don't know for sure but i think it's uh <clears throat> i think it's more they're more relaxed with it than they used to be i'm pretty sure at some point actually i'm 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 positive at some point that it used to be uh gay people weren't allowed in the military whatsoever but then i think like i said then it went to the don't ask don't tell policy and now i think it's more relaxed to where you can be open about it and you, you know you can't be punished or persecuted or anything like that for your uh sex gender sexual orientation or anything like that so that's good but just so you all are aware it is about that time i think it's midnight check my clock Whenever it comes up. 12.02. So. I will. Uh, bid you all farewell. Farewell now. And. Um, yeah. I hope you all. Are enjoying your new year. And I hope you. Hope you all enjoyed the stream. Like I said. I'm probably going to do. Uh, for sure. At least uh, two times. That's an amazing story of your life and experiences. We appreciate you. Thank you. I love, uh, if you haven't noticed, um, I like talking and I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> I can ramble on for hours, as you all have noticed. So I'm just glad I have somebody to talk to and somebody that will uh, learn from my experiences and what I have to, what I have to offer. Um, so yeah, but like I was saying, uh, I'll be doing, still deciding on exactly what days I'll be streaming, but it'll most likely be Monday for sure, um, because I'm eager to get back to uh, talking to you guys after the weekend, and then probably, so basically, okay, so I'll probably do Monday and Thursday, because the way my workouts are set up. I want to get at least one lower body day in there and one upper body day. So the way my split is set up is I do 
lower, upper, lower, upper. So if I were to do Monday and Wednesday, for example, like this week, you guys would be watching me doing um, uh, back and buys like today. And then Wednesday would be chest and tries, which not that it's not interesting, but me personally, I, I think leg workouts, because it's like what I enjoy doing the most, um, I, I just think you guys will get more out of watching a leg workout as opposed to uh, upper body workouts. So, and plus, I want to start doing uh, at least one day a week where I'll stream uh, a no no equipment workout. So, it'll probably still be at the gym just because my kids go to sleep at 8 and wife goes to sleep at like 9 or 9.30. Uh, and I don't want to be all extra loud. Not until I actually build my gym and do the soundproofing and all that kind of stuff. But, um, so it'll probably still be at the gym, but I'll do no equipment workouts at least once, or not at least, probably just once a week so that you guys can, you know, get that uh, get that content as well. Uh, for you guys that don't have equipment or don't have access to gyms. Um, but yeah, so I'm thinking it'll probably be Monday, Thursday. And then that way it'll also give me Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Friday, and then whatever it is on the weekend to record for my videos and actually post and all that kind of stuff. Because he's a Gemini. <laughs> You're easy to listen to, too. So thank you. I really enjoyed this live. Have a blessed night. Thank you. You, too. You do the same. I'd be interested for sure. Legs for life. <laughs> What's your Instagram? Yeah, I don't have Instagram yet. I'll be, like I said, I'll probably, uh, it'll be this week. It'll be sometime this week. I'll get my Instagram started up and I'll let you guys know either. Uh, I'll tell you guys during the next stream, but also I'll post a comment um, in the you know, community section of my page. So I'll post it. And if you guys are subscribed and all that, uh, it should send you a notification of the of the post. So Miles is a blessing we cherish and respect you. Love you. Thanks you guys. To all of you who enjoy enjoy the stream and especially to, if you're if you're getting anything out of it, whatever it may be, uh, hopefully I'm bringing some kind of some kind of education or, you know, value to your life that you can apply in some way. So, um, as far as social media, all I have is uh, Facebook and I'm trying to think. I think it might just be um, like facebook.com slash Miles Partridge. I don't know if there's a bunch of numbers and crap after it. But basically, just go into Facebook, um, type in Miles Partridge. If you don't see me, it should be a picture of me with my kid behind me. By the way, my phone is at probably like 5% now, so hopefully it doesn't die. But um, if you don't see me under Miles Partridge, you can type, uh, I know for sure that my Partridge Custom Works page is facebook.com slash Partridge Custom Works. And then if you go to there, I'm not telling you to like that page or anything. There's um, honestly like no reason to because it's a, kind of a local thing. But uh, if you go there, you can see that I am the my personal page is like in uh, in charge of the uh, professional page. So you should be able to see it from there. More workout content, please. Yes, it is on the way. Like I said, I should have one. I should have a video coming up, maybe mid midweek, but for sure this week. So you guys will see that. But I've done all your first few workouts and couldn't find any more. Yeah, I kind of. That's my fault. I uh, I made some, and then just stopped for honestly no reason, no reason why. I stopped. I could have kept doing it no matter what job I was doing or anything like that. So should have, but no excuse. But I'm here now and I 
intend to continue for you guys. Actually, I don't intend to. I am going to. One day you got to get a story to Hunter SS Magazine feature. Well, the, well the, that, the man who just commented right after you, he'll be uh, an essential part of that story. Cam Montgomery Jr. He's the man who found me and got me going on that. Good night, brother. Good night, Cam. You have a good one. I know out there in Cali, it's probably only, what, like 10, 10, 10 or something like that. So lucky you, you still got more, more hours, but I'll actually still be up for a couple more doing some work on my computer. I got fat when you stopped. <laughs> well, damn, I better keep going then. I think I'm going to work out tonight after your live. You motivated me. There you go. I motivated one person to work out. That's all. That's all that matters. So, but all right, guys, I'm going to head inside and um, not sleep yet, but drink some water, put some chapstick on these chapped lips and get some computer work done, get that video up and running for you guys. So my Instagram uh, is not up and running yet. I need to, uh, I'll get that going sometime this week, like I said, but stay tuned for all that. Once I, once I, um, get my Instagram, as soon as I create it, first thing I'll do is put the, uh, (laughs) let me put this burger down. (laughs) First thing I do after I create my Instagram is I'll go to my Facebook or my uh, YouTube page and post what my, you know, my app is or my tag, whatever you call it. Uh, I'll post that on YouTube. And then, of course, in the next live, I'll, you know, every time somebody asks, I'll let you guys know what it is. You got a two-year-old baby birthday ready for, you're ready for, go get some sleep. It's a good point. I'm actually taking him to gymnastics uh, tomorrow morning, tomorrow at 10. So that's fun. I usually take him on Thursday, but this week it's, uh, they're doing it on Tuesday because that's actually his birthday. So we got some stuff lined up for him. So it'll be fun. But all right, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you most likely Thursday. But I'll put, uh, like I said, before I before I do, I'll put the uh, notification about it probably mm, I'll do it a couple hours early like I did today, maybe around three-ish so that you guys can have plenty of time to prepare for it. So, all right, guys. Dion, have a blessed night, too. All right, guys. Have a good one.